Good morning and welcome to St Mary's Church in West Horsley in Surrey. Now today we are here to visit the final resting place of a comedian from my era back in the 80s. Now he was on par with people like Benny Hill and uh, maybe even like the later day kind of comedians like Harry Enfield and, and Chums. That kind of humour, that kind of show, loads of clips, loads of different characters. And the person who we are here to visit today is, of course, Dick Emery. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, madam. Miss. Yes, miss. Are you the gentleman in charge of this test centre? I am. Can I help you? I've heard that there's one of your examiners who won't pass a woman driver unless she lets him have his way with her. <laughs> well, I don't know whether it's true or not, miss, but if you can point him out to me, I'll have him. No, you point him out to me, and I'll have him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, so God, God, the nice distinguished <laughs> <laughs> Richard Gilbert Emery was born 19th of February 1915 in University College Hospital, Bloomsbury, London. His parents were comedy double act Callan and Emery. They took him on tour when he was only three weeks old and gave him the occasional turn on the stage during his childhood, which was always on the move and disrupted, creating problems for the future, but setting the scene for eventually going into show business himself. His parents split up when he was eight and he chose to stay with his mother, who gave up show business. He tried a variety of jobs before the stage, mechanic, office boy, farmhand and driving instructor. During the Second World War, he was called up to the RAF and rose to the rank of corporal. However, because of family problems, he returned to London joining the chorus line of the Merry Widow at the Majestic Theatre, although he was subsequently recognised, arrested and imprisoned. He was recruited by Ralph Reader into the RAF gang show to entertain air and ground crew at bases in Great Britain. At this time he created Vera Thin, the force's sweetheart loosely based on Vera Lynn. On leaving the RAF he returned to the theatre as a comedian. He worked at the Windmill Theatre though his name does not appear on the plaque commemorating the acts that played there. He toured his fledgling act around the United Kingdom. He also auditioned for various parts and in 1952 he starred in a role in a 15 minute Radio Luxembourg series on Saturdays at 7pm called Chance of a Lifetime. He also made a guest appearance on the popular BBC radio programme The Goon Show, replacing regular cast member Harry Seacombe for one episode in 1957. During 1953 he briefly formed a double act with Charlie Drake. His television debut came in 1950 on the Centre Show of, on the BBC. He appeared on TV programmes including Round the Bend, BBC 1955-1956 and Educating Archie, ITV 1958 1959 and appeared with his friend Terry Hancock in several episodes of The Tony Hancock Show, ITV 1956 and Hancock's Half Hour, BBC 1957. He enhanced his reputation on two series with former goon Michael Benteen, After Hours, ITV, 1958-59, and It's a Square World, BBC, 1960-64. His role as Private Chubby Catchpole in the final series of The Army Game, ITV, 1960, led to an exclusive BBC contract with long-running Dick Emery show, BBC, 1963-81 began. The show involved Emery dressing up as various characters, lasted 18 series, totally 166 episodes, aired between 1963 and 1981. In a sporadic film career, he made his debut in The Goon's Case of the Muckanese Battlehorn, 1954. He also played bungling bank robber Bookie Bins in The Big Job, 1965, and was known for vocal talents as an array of characters including The Nowhere Man, Jeremy Hillary Boob, the Mayor of Pepperland and Max, one of the Blue Meanies in The Beatles' Yellow Submarine in 1968. Emery appeared in films as Shingler in The Fast Lady 1962, as Peter Sellers' Neighbour in The Wrong Arm of the Law, as Harry in Baby Love 1968, and Mr Bateman in Loot 1970, and Ooh You Are Awful 1972, in which he played many of the characters he portrayed in his TV series. 
The plot of this comedy centred on Emery hunting down a bank account number. The digits of the number are tattooed on the bottoms of four young women. Emery has to see the girls naked, which requires disguises. One of the women is played by Lisa Goddard. In 1982, Emery was tiring of the format for his BBC series and wanted to do something different. Using a new format and character, Jewish private detective Bernie Weinstein, Emery had a new outlet. Two series of comedy thrillers under the banner Emery Presents BBC 1982-83, Legacy of Murder and Jack of Diamonds. Emery had a very difficult childhood initially, but things settled down following the departure of his father, Laurie Howe. He was devoted to his mother for most of his life and helped support her once he was able to work. This devotion caused problems in his marriages. He was in six long-term relationships, marrying five times and also had numerous affairs. He often appeared in tabloid newspapers with beautiful women. At the beginning of the Second World War, he married Joan, sometimes known as Zelda, Sainsbury, and had one son, Gilbert Richard. After the failure of that marriage, he married Irene, Pip, Ansel, but the marriage barely lasted six months. While working in summer season in 1950 at the Winter Gardens in Ventnor on the Isle of Wight, he met Iris Margaret Tully, who was also in the show. At the end of the season, they returned to London and set up home together in Iris's flat in Shaftesbury Avenue. Iris changed her name to Emery by deed poll until 1955, a year after she had given birth to his second son, Nicholas William. She and Emery married in 1955. The marriage was a rocky one because Emery had several affairs while away on tour. He met the woman who became his fourth wife, Victoria Chambers, in mid-1950s. He was torn between the two women, but in late 1958 he left Iris and moved to Thames Disson in Surrey to set up home. In 1960, however, he returned to Iris and his son and moved them to Thames Ditton, but he could never settle, and in 1962 he left Iris for Victoria. Iris divorced him in 1964. His last wife was Josephine Blake, to whom he was still married at the time of his death, although he had left her to live with Faye Hillier, an actress 30 years his junior. He was a keen maker of scale models and was president of the Airfix Modelers Club. He also wrote a review feature for Meccano magazine during 1971. In December 1982, Emery was taken to a London hospital with severe chest pains. He died at the hospital from cardiorespiratory failure, on the 2nd of January 1983 at the age of 67. <laughs> well? Very good. For an attractive young lady, you surprised me. You drove like a man. Oh, thank you. Apart from your two big boobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you all looked like you reacted when that policeman suddenly put his hand up. Oh, you are awful. <laughs> but I like you. <laughs> Oh, well, that's all the information I could get on Dick Emery. But yeah, he did have quite a complicated life with his wife and his younger lover, who had for years. Now, when he died, I know he left his estate to his lover. He kept his wife and his lover on because I think he'd felt from both the same. He couldn't make up his mind which one he wanted to be with, so he just decided to be with both of them. But when he died, he left his estate to his lover. And after he died, his wife took his lover to court and she won the court case and she ended up walking away with three quarters of his estate, whereas his lover only kept one quarter. Um, now, I know they also split the ashes because um, he was cremated. Um, but half of his ashes, I should imagine, if not all of his ashes, are buried here. I've actually seen the headstone. It's literally right in front of me. So I shall spin you around and we're going to have a look together. Right, stone is just over here next to the actual church itself. Right, it's right in the monk's seat, so I shall have to climb through them. It's uh, quite a new headstone. But here it is. In memory of my beloved husband, Richard Gilbert Emery, 1915 to 1983. It's not much on now. It looks like the wife buried her share of his ashes here. Hopefully they're all here. 
But that is a final resting place of Dick Emery. Well, that was the final resting place of Dick Emery. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, then uh, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything, it's absolutely free. Just hit that subscribe button. And if you do, don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Well, anyway, that is it from West Horsley in Surrey. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for now.